in this video we are going to consider types of structural loads which are dead loads life loads point loads uniformly distributed loads and environmental loads environmental loads can further be broken down into wind loads snow loads thermal loads earthquake loads earth pressure loads settlement loads others are gravity loads water and ice loads dead loads dead loads can also be known as permanent loads or static loads building structures for example constitute of different elements that help to keep the structure stable and reliable. Moving any of these elements can compromise the integrity of the structure and can even cause structural failure. Dead loads will remain relatively constant over time. Examples are beams. Columns, floor finishes, walls, partition walls, roofs, Staircase also constitutes dead loads. Slabs are used to separate floors of tall structures. The slab remains relatively permanent over time and constitutes dead load. All the immovable fixtures and members of a structural building or structure are known as dead loads. But the building materials before the construction are not dead loads. The structural elements from the materials are dead loads. Life loads. Life loads can also be called applied loads or imposed loads or variable action loads. After the completion of a building, for instance, the structure is empty and constitutes dead loads. People will occupy the building and will move in with items and equipment. Most of these life loads will vary, but will add to the weight imposed on the structure. For example, library books, wardrobes, vehicles, including people occupying the structure and some appliances and installations that will help human comfort. Life loads like dead loads can be a point load or a uniformly distributed load over an area. Moving house and leaving an apartment, for example, will definitely reduce the life load on that structure. Point loads. Another name for point load is concentrated load. A load or force placed on a small area is known as concentrated load. 
if the load is small compared to the area, it can still be considered as a point load. For example, each of these aircraft are large enough to contain many people. However, compared to the large surface area of the runway, each of these planes can be considered as a point load. Subsequently, this is a column load acting on a footing. Hence, this is considered as a point load because the area of the column compared to the area of the footing is relatively small. Also, a machinery mounted on the floor of a factory can be considered as a point load. Again, in the design of facilities management, each of these can be considered as a point load at the top of the roof. And each of these point loads are acting on the slab. For easy analysis and design, we represent point load with an arrow. Uniformly distributed loads, UDL. Another name for a uniformly distributed load is surface loads. Consider this beam. The weight exerted on the beam is uniformly distributed across the beam. Roofing materials are uniformly distributed on a structure. This beam is experiencing a uniformly distributed load. Also, this beam is experiencing a uniformly distributed load. However, the values of their uniformly distributed load will be different, where the value of A will be greater than B. Besides dead loads, life loads, point loads, and uniformly distributed loads. Environmental loads constitute wind loads, snow loads, thermal loads, earthquake loads, earth pressure loads, settlement loads. Others are gravity loads, water and ice loads. Wind loads. Wind loads are applied by the movement of air relative to a structure. Wind loads will become a serious concern during design and construction with respect to the height of the structure and the wind exposure. To avoid structural failure due to wind loads, where the dead weight of the structure is not sufficient to resist wind loads, additional structures, supports and fixings may be required. Bracing a tall structure can help resist wind loads. In complex wind analysis and design, computational fluid dynamic software will really be necessary. Snow load. This type of load is imposed by the accumulation of snow. This type of load is a consign in geographical regions where snow load can be heavy and frequent. The shape of a roof can determine the magnitude of the snow load. Snow falling on a flat roof is likely to accumulate, whereas snow is more likely to fall off a steep roof pitch. Snow falling from a rooftop 
can be dangerous. Heavy snow on a rooftop can be a problem. And this can be solved using heater cap, which is an electric heating system for the icing. The amount of rain falling on a structure can become a problem if this rain will form ice left on the structure. This ice can become additional load. Earthquakes. This is a horizontal load imposed on a structure during seismic activity. Design should ensure that structures do not fail if an earthquake occurs. Thermal loads. Structural materials can expand and contrast with temperature changes, and this can exert significant loads on a structure. During the summer, most of the materials will gain heat, while during winter, most of the materials will lose heat. These constant changes on a material over time can cause structural failure like the expansion joint in bridges expansion joints can be provided at points on the long section of a structure such as walls and floors so that the elements of the structure are physically separated and can expand without causing structural damage Gravity loads. Gravity loads, unlike lateral loads, constitute the weight of the entire structure coming down on the foundation due to gravity. Settlement loads. After a structure is completed, the ground under it increases with vertical effective stress. Stresses can occur in buildings if one part settles more than another during the use of the structure. During design, the building should be designed to be flexible and not stiff. This will help to accommodate small settlement stresses. Underpinning can help to strengthen the foundation and fix the damage caused by settlement load. Earth pressure loads. This is pressure of the soil, called earth pressure at rest. Soil has self-weight and have the tendency to move laterally, at times caused by moisture saturation. Retaining walls are constructed to restrict soil movement. In Conclusion Environmental loads are all external loads acting dynamically on a structure due to the environmental exposure of the structure. Highway structures, roads, and bridges are usually exposed to environmental loads and stresses.
if this video was helpful don't forget to subscribe like and share to locate and assess other helpful videos follow the link on the screen i will see you in the next video lesson